Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. I am thrilled with the episode I'm about to bring to you. We pride ourselves in, you know, bringing you the best of the OGs, whether we're talking about original gangster, actual gangsters, or we're talking about OG FBI agents or prosecutors, or if we're talking about OG crime writers, I got one of the best in the business, somebody that I've looked up to for a long time. Never had him in, uh, never had him on the podcast to interview him, but it's no better time than now. Dan Herbeck from the Buffalo News. He's been reporting on crime in Buffalo since the 1970s, and he's on top of the crazy Buffalo strip club uh, alleged mob, uh, alleged DEA bribery case involving the Outlaw Motorcycle Club, but, uh, the Magadino crime family, maybe. And uh, it's it's a crazy story, Dan. Is where does this rank in um, the the trials and tribulations of, of Buffalo crime in your time? Well, I've been covering crimes at the Buffalo News for almost forty seven years, believe it or not. And um, this is certainly one of the cases that that has gotten a, a lot of attention, more than probably 95% of the stories that I cover because there's so many different disturbing angles to it. Uh, you've got a strip club where the, the feds say human trafficking and drug trafficking is going on. Uh, the, the alleged treatment of these women that work in the strip clubs, you've got uh an alleged, I, I use the word alleged a lot, Scott, because mm -hmm. it, it's my newspaper training. Yeah, you need if to. I try hasn't to... been proved. I have yep. to say alleged. Absolutely. There's an alleged uh, organized crime angle to this. Yes. And of course, there's uh, there's alleged involvement of the uh, the outlaws biker gang in, in murdering a federal witness. So yep. a lot of serious stuff. Um, there's a, a federal prosecutor named Joe Trippi that's handling this case that is a, a very fierce advocate. And he he's is a bulldog. He's a bulldog. Yeah, he and his uh, staff are pursuing this. Um, unlike almost any case I've ever seen the government pursue. Well, you know, for anybody that doesn't know, let's just give a quick 20 second synopsis. I know most of the people watching this know what's up but uh about five years ago domino started to fall in an investigation into activity coming out of the pharaoh's gentlemen's club in suburban buffalo a town called chituaga uh it's owned by um a alleged self-professed organized crime figure uh peter gerace jr who according to grand jury testimony uh, was boasting about his role in the Buffalo mob, but he has not been connected to the Buffalo mob in anything other than um, that testimony. He is the owner of the strip club. He is the nephew of another alleged mafia figure, uh, the reputed Don of Western New York, Joe Todaro Jr., who we should say has no criminal record, no criminal convictions. Um, and in 2021, Jerace Jr. is indicted along with a retired DEA agent for uh, sex trafficking, drug trafficking, money laundering, bribery out of the strip club. Um, over the next couple of years, you had some suspicious deaths, uh, one being of a New York Supreme Court judge who was an undated co-conspirator in this case. And then more recently, back in the summer, you had what prosecutors are calling uh, the, uh, the murder of a the star witness in this upcoming case, a woman by the name of Crystal Quinn, 37 years old. She was a employee at Pharaoh's Gentleman's Club, worked her way up from kind of being a, from what I understand, from being a dancer, a uh, stripper, to being Gerace Jr.'s personal assistant and appointment secretary. She was facing a case of her own 
cut a cooperation deal last winter, um, which led to Gerace Jr. having his bond revoked because of, uh, of alleged intimidation tactics. And more recently, you now have superseding indictments that are tied to obstruction of justice related to the death of Crystal Quinn of an intentional overdose back in August. And that's where you bring in the outlaws and the uh, potentially one of the most powerful crime lords in the world right now. Um, he would, and his attorney would push back on that notion, but definitely a, a powerhouse in the Buffalo biker scene, Outlaws Motorcycle Club president, John Ehrman, a.k.a. Tommy O. So that was longer than 20 seconds. Well, it's a good, pretty good summary. Um, one thing I would mention is the uh, the federal drug agent, Joe Bon Giovanni. He's a, accused of uh, taking bribes and he's accused of through taking bribes uh, of of helping drug traffickers traffic drugs, but he just just to make a point, he he's not accused. Oh, he's not accused of any of this um, any, of, any of this witness tampering traffic. or yeah. uh, right. intentional overdoses or right right. Yeah. Now, just in fairness to him, I want yes. to mention that. But uh, yeah, you've pretty much summarized it pretty well, and. Uh, you know, my my associate at our newspaper, Pat LeCamp, and I, uh, mostly Pat, uh, have we've had a hard time keeping up with the feds with all the things that they've charged, all the allegations that they've made in this case. When's the trial supposed to begin? It's been delayed like five or six times. It's supposed to start back in the summer. Then it was the fall. Right. Now it's the winter. Well, the, the Bon Giovanni trial has been separated from the Gerace trial, and that is going to be within the next month or two, I believe, okay. starting. Uh, the the uh, Peter Gerace trial, uh, they don't have a new trial date because at this point they don't even know who's going to represent him. He's uh, the Fed Steve, or, was it Steve? Was Steve Cohen his his attorney? Steve stepped away, and now they're looking to replace him. Steve stepped away, um, and they are looking. Well, they they replaced him with two other attorneys, and the federal government is now uh, conducting an investigation into Steve Cohen and another attorney. Yeah, um, which the feds have not told us much about, but. It's mentioned uh, in the court filings. Steve Cohen is an unindicted co-conspirator co in yes. this case, which he vigorously denies um, that they're saying that he conspired with his client and, and the outlaws to silence a witness. They, mm -hmm. they, they haven't accused Steve, the lawyer, of, of uh, taking part in the death of right. this woman. And but, I've read the charges and I've seen, it's all related to a text exchange that Steve had with Crystal Quinn. Um, you can read between the lines. There's nothing overt in yeah. the text that is threatening to her. No. Um, but there are definitely some, if you wanted to uh, try to, again, read between the lines or or uh, look at subtext. Yeah. Or and the government doesn't tell us tell us everything they have either. Um, and, and Steve was not mentioned by name as a co-conspirator, but uh, those of us who have been in the courtroom, if you read the court papers, it's crystal clear that it could only be Steve that yeah, they're, no, they're I, referring I have, to. I have that on, on my So it's unusual to see if a, a lawyer um, being uh, investigated in this way. Um, I, I, I have never seen it. Well, there's been a couple cases over the years that I've covered where lawyers have been actually involved in criminal activity, drug dealing and other activities. Uh, but this this is a it's a rare, a rare type of investigation. There's a lot of nexus points in, in this narrative, uh, a lot of hot button you know, for lack of a better term, you know, sexy buzzwords that get people attracted to a case. I can imagine this will be a Dateline NBC at some time soon. I can imagine there will be, at the very least, some type of Netflix docuseries, if not a scripted yeah. film in the future. This, this is just so crazy. You couldn't, you couldn't put the best 
Hollywood screenwriters in a room together and tell them to come up with a plot like this. And just that yeah. it's things are evolving at a breakneck pace. Just when you think things are slowing down, they pick up again. Um, I want to kind of bring us, let's just go backwards for a second. And let's say go back 10 years. And there were, you know, there was the belief that organized crime in Buffalo was a thing of the past. Um, there was very little coverage, but there wasn't a lot to cover. Um, mm -hmm. Things were, if if there is organized crime in Buffalo still, and I believe there is, and I believe there's a, a, a prominent presence that was able to, for whatever reason, stay under the radar for 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 a while and let people think they were were dead and gone in reality they were stronger than ever um mm. but there was this narrative and all of a sudden like i said about five years ago there was clearly a directive from someone in washington or someone you know in a u.s attorney's office uh, somewhere in manhattan i don't know Western New York, where you guys are, but it, there's been a very, very concerted, deliberate, methodical full court press that has been coming for five years where they're kind of chipping away at the, the outer fringes, this case, that case, this case, that case, and that might not mm -hmm. look in a vacuum, it might not look like it's connected, but in reality, if yeah. in my analysis, is that it's all connected and it is kind of culminating in this in this trial but I'm kind of interested in your take on like a why was there there a, a period of time of about 10 15 years where it didn't look like there was a lot of activity and and it was kind of a, a, a forgotten part of the buffalo landscape because mm -hmm. for years as you know I mean there was a lot of coverage of Magadino and yeah. um, and and all those guys. Uh, what's your take on that? And then what's your take on how Trippy and his team have put together this, you know, a full fledged assault? They're they're clicking on all cylinders, going after yeah. um, a lot of different people, and I, I I think they're far from done. Well, seventy years ago. Buffalo was con considered one of the mob hotbeds of the United States. Buffalo and Niagara Falls. Steve Magadino uh, was, was one of the most powerful dons in the country. Um, then he passed away in the late 60s. He, um, he left a void that has never really been filled. Um, the uh, feds have alleged that various people have headed the mob after his demise, um, including Joe Todaro and his father, Joe Todaro Sr., uh, both of whom were never convicted of a crime. Yep. Uh, the feds have never had luck in prosecuting leaders of the Buffalo mob, if there is a leadership. Um, and, and you make a good argument. Uh, how... How could there not be an organized crime um, presence in a city the size of Buffalo? But they have really operated under the radar. I mean, there, there are very few mob hits in Buffalo. We haven't had one in many years. Um, very few you know, crimes of violence involving the mob in Buffalo. So, um, it, it almost seems like about five years ago, <clears throat> someone from the government said, and this is just a conjecture on my part, it, it, oh, it almost seems like somebody said, why do we never have any organized crime prosecutions in Buffalo? What's going on there? Are you guys doing your job? And uh, they, they put this bulldog of a prosecutor, Joe Trippi, on it. And as you say, he's been chipping away at the edges of people who allegedly have connections to organized crime. There's a, a Buffalo school teacher went to prison because 
He's an alleged made man in the mob, and he was selling weapons and drugs. Uh, a, a beloved school teacher, by mm-hmm. the way. Football coach. Football coach, too. A, a football coach and soccer coach. Uh, then they went after Peter Geraci's brother, who's Am- in prison Anthony. now. Yeah, on a drug, drug and weapons charges. Uh, a few other people, but... I don't know if I, I I doubt if any of these people are actually close to the leadership. No, they're not roles of Buffalo. But like you say, chipping away at the outer edges. And I think that's the way prosecutors do this. Then they started going after Peter Geraci. And, um, you know, there's another interesting angle to this, according to. To the feds, prominent people hung out at that strip club. And uh, Geraci made friends with with uh, prominent people, including a judge who sadly killed himself because the feds wanted to interview him in this investigation. And you, you're, you're standing behind that that, is, that was a legitimate suicide. You don't have any questions. Well, um he he dove in dove in front of a train on a previous right. occasion. Right. Miraculously survived. Now, I wish that he would have t- taken that as a sign from God that God wanted him to live. Because uh, you know, you dive under a train and you live. To me, that's a sign from God that He yeah. wants you to stay alive and do something good with your life. But anyway. Uh, months after that, he took his own life, and um, it was on the heels of a raid. His house had been it, raided like a week before that. The FBI had raided his house um, in what seems to be a very sketchy uh, investigation aimed at the judge's wife, who was selling things on eBay. And she's never been charged with any crime related to this raid. So a lot of people believe that the raid was only done to pressure the judge to testify before the FBI. Uh, The judge died in his home soon after that. I do not believe it was anything other than a suicide. Um, But I've I've been wrong before, uh, but I, I don't see it. And then, and I want to ask your opinion on another suspicious death that gets a lot less attention. Um, there was a young man uh, that died suspiciously in the hours before uh, Joe Bon Giovanni was indicted back in 2019, which was the first kind of domino to fall here. I believe he was indicted at, well, I don't know if the feds raided his house, but the indictment came down in a morning and the previous evening uh this guy who ran a, a funeral home who i'm told had ties into some of this drug trafficking um died in the middle of the street it was kind of called a suicide there are people that question it the timing seems very suspicious any thoughts there's always been questions surrounding that death but um Media, news media has investigated it. The police have investigated it. If if it if it was a homicide, it's been successfully covered up to this point. And then now we have Crystal Quinn, and I want to kind of get in a little bit into some legal. Let's try to put our legal hats on, maybe for a second. And I know you're a reporter. I'm not. Ask, if you don't feel comfortable, um, I, I totally understand. But I. I as of some court hearings this winter, this this is a in my the way I am phrasing this or or trying to uh, set a stage for people that are following me to give them coverage of it. It looks to me like this is a, a giant game of chicken right now between the prosecutors and these four or five co-defendants that are charged in this obstruction case related to the racketeering case, but not, mm-hmm. not part of the original set of charges. Yeah, I think that <clears throat> to me, it's a bit of a bluff 
you had you had the defense attorneys make a, a motion recently uh, for what's called learned counsel, which is something that you request when you've been informed that your client might be facing a death penalty case. Yeah. Um, the prosecutors in Buffalo are refusing to tell the defense or the judge that they will not seek the death penalty. They're saying it's very possible we will. Um, if you don't want the death penalty, plead guilty right now and we'll go, mm -hmm. uh, we can just, you know, call it a day. My analysis, and I just want to get your take on it, is Simon Gogol, for people that don't know, Crystal Quinn uh, cut a cooperation deal in the winter. By the spring, summer, she's really paranoid that that the outlaws, people that are loyal to Gerace and the his alleged connections to the Magadino crime family want to kill her. Um, she knew the outlaws intimately. She had partied at, at the outlaws um, clubhouse. I believe she had an, an actual overdose at, uh, at one time at the clubhouse and she survived. She knew Tommy O. And at some point in July, a former high school friend of hers named Simon Gogolak makes contact with her. Hadn't seen her in 10 years or 15 years. Tells her, I'm going to hide you. You can come hide with me. I'm yeah. going to take you about 90 miles away from Erie County, which is where Buffalo is, to Allegheny County. Yeah. Um, and the police and prosecutors and the FBI believe that it was a ruse, that Gogolak intended to kill her. Uh, and Gogolak even admits giving her the, um, the, the, the Xanax bar that was laced with fentanyl that killed her. He says he didn't know that there was any fentanyl in it, that she, he thought he was just giving her a regular Xanax pill. Yeah. Other than him, I don't see right now how you could bring murder charges, frankly, against Peter Gerace or Tommy O, unless there's something that we're unaware of. It looks bad, but what? how can you can? There was a a prison meeting a couple of weeks before between mm -hmm. Tommy O and Peter Dre, yeah. but it's, it's all conjecture. It's all circumstantial. It's, it's conjecture and it's circumstantial, but again, the, the feds don't, don't show all their cards, you know, at this point. And uh, maybe the defense lawyers and the defendants know, know what other evidence the feds have and you and I don't. But, um, yeah, I, I would say it's very clear that they're trying to squeeze people, trying to get somebody to uh, be fearful that the death penalty is going to be used against them and, and come forward and, and be the first person to uh, become, you know, a government witness in this case uh, among those. It all kind of hinges um, on Google Act, though, doesn't it? <clears throat> I mean, um, I, I don't think there's... It's, if you're coming from a prosecutorial point of view, I don't think there's any way you believe that Simon Gogolak was just doing this, uh, you know, of his own volition. In fact, they're saying that he was sending out texts and other messages uh, offering his services as a hitman in the months before yeah. Yeah. Um, Crystal Quinn died. I mean, uh, they've got their sights set on him and they're, I'm sure they would love him to cooperate. Um, they reindicted him, didn't they? For uh, or not? They reindicted him. him twice. Yeah, he's indicted on the obstruction. He's indicted uh, he's for a drug and weapons case. Yeah, yeah. And then they caught I him. Mean, he is facing very serious charges. Um, and then they they caught him uh, dealing drugs uh, from his lockup. And I just saw in a court filing the other day, they're saying that uh, they have transcripts of phone calls where he was telling people that he was going to get out on bond and uh, flee to Canada. He, he is not going to get out, out on bond. Oh, yeah, no, he ain't now. This was, I, I think, think he was I, saying this to them back in the fall. Yeah. Well, you know, he's an interesting guy. Um, there was one thing that the government put out that I wrote about, but it didn't get a lot of attention. Um, somebody that had dealt with him in the world of drugs said, told the feds that, that a couple of years ago, uh, Simon Gogolak called him to his home and invited him down in the basement. And there was a chair with 
uh, plastic tarps under it and around it and uh, surrounding all the walls of his basement. And uh, you can only imagine what a scary scene that was. Yeah. And I guess it was just to scare the guy. Uh, the guy wasn't killed, but man, that's... It's a colorful that, cast of characters here. It paints a, a picture, yeah. A, a rose gallery of yeah. uh, figures when it comes to the, the people uh, at the defense table here. In addition to Gerace and Tommy O, Simon Gogolak, you have a, uh, another motorcycle boss named Mike Ronconi, yeah. Yeah. who is the boss of the Rear Breed Motorcycle Club, which is the uh, support club, biggest support club for the outlaws. Uh, you got a guy named uh, Howard Hard Howie Hinkle, uh, yeah. who is an alleged drug dealer that works with the, the outlaw bikers and was with Crystal Quinn at the end of uh last couple hours of her life for Gogolak and Hinkle took Crystal to a, a party that was being held by the, the rare breed in Allegheny County. Yeah. Um, w w give me your take on like how the obstruction case and a potential homicide case coming after that, how does that affect what's actually going to be happening in court when it, whether it comes to Bon Giovanni's case, who sadly for him, like you said, he's not tied into any of this uh, yeah. really, really dark, depraved violence. He's not to say what he did was or what he's being accused of is good. He's being accused of pocketing quarter million dollars to uh yeah. you know protect the drug operations being run by italian organized crime in in yeah. in, in um in new york but I, I how, how do you see it playing out at the at the trials i don't know how it's going to play out in court because it's almost like there's three separate cases now the uh the the bon giovanni case the the Geraci case of of uh drug trafficking human trafficking and paying bribes to a federal agent. And then you've got this, this thing about case. obstruction of, of justice and, and plant plotting to kill a, a federal witness, which I think will almost have to, will have to be a separate trial. Well, I think it's going to be rolled into an actual homicide case. I mean, I would, I'm see. guessing by the summertime, we will have first degree murder charges brought. Well, uh, they, against they have at least some of these, these guys plotted to kill her, yeah. and then she was killed. So it, it would seem to me that that's where they're heading, but it hasn't happened yet. Have you had any personal interaction with uh, the Gerace family or the Jadaros just in being around Buffalo? For you know, they're all you guys are all born and bred Buffalo guys, and any personal takes on these people? Not I've, from a yeah. Not, you know, not looking at from a legal perspective, but just, you know, personally. I've never met Peter Geraci. My my retired colleague, Lou Michelle, uh, has talked to him on an, a number of occasions. And, you know, Peter is, uh, he, he's a guy who feels, or at least portrays himself as a guy who feels that the government is trying to make a mountain out of a molehill and and trying to make him into something that he's really not. Joe Todaro, uh, I have encountered and met a number of times over the years. Um, he's a very, in in all my dealings with him, he's a very soft-spoken um, gentleman who you would not, think is involved in organized crime, but um, I don't know what happens behind the scenes. He has always, uh, when I meet him, he's, he's always told me that I'm a gentleman because I'm careful not to uh, convict him in my articles. And um, I always point out that he's never been convicted of a crime, which yes, I think I is too. only fair. Yeah. Although at the same time, my newspaper and my and I have have written numerous times about the allegations that he is the head of the mob in Buffalo. So um, he's not someone who hides, though. I mean, he's not a recl reclusive, reputed crime lord. He's somebody that is very prominent in the community. His yes, La Nova uh, 
pizza and wing empire. You know, he take away any allegations of criminal wrongdoing. He's a multimillionaire, probably a million, you know, 10, 20 times over from legitimate means. Um, he's somebody that I, I've seen numerous, you know, pictures at his at his pizza place. Uh, I know he did a a bar stool. He, he sat there with Dave Portnoy and did a bar stool bar stool pizza review. Yeah. Uh, he works with the Buffalo Bills and Buffalo sure. Sabers. Um, he's he's a, a man about town, so it doesn't look like people, at least ostensibly. Everybody does business yeah. with him. It doesn't look people are afraid to do business with him. In, in, in his uh, in his identity as as the the businessman who runs Lanova Pizza, he he doesn't hide from the public at all. In fact, you can go into his one of his businesses almost any day of the week, and there he's, there. he's working. He's you behind know, the not, he's behind the counter. He's not hiding himself. Um, at the same time. Being in the news media, he I can tell you he's very reluctant to discuss no, I know. the mob allegations. He he doesn't like to talk about it. Uh he'll make jokes about it. Uh he, he Dave scoffs, Portnoy, scoffs Dave, at it. Yeah. Dave Portnoy had no idea who he was. Yeah, yeah. And he made a joke about the mob, not realizing that it could even offend him. Oh. And and Tadaro made it, oh yeah, we don't say that word in this. But oh. but Porter thought he was just a regular Italian pizza yeah, shop yeah. owner. Who, by the way, that's what Joe Tadaro would tell you he is. He, well, he um, is that. Right. But yeah. The feds say he's also something else. Um, but he, he's a beloved guy in Buffalo. I mean, uh, the former mayor of Buffalo, Tony Massiello, uh, speaks very highly of him. And he's good numerous, for the economy. He's good for the economy there. Yeah. Numerous public officials would. Are, are not afraid to, to go to his pizza restaurant and, you know, there's some people around that... with them. I've, I've been at, at public, uh, at uh, events where he's, you know, he's, I've been to parties where he's hobnobbing with people, uh, judges, politicians, Everyone knew who he was, and nobody was um, hiding from him or ducking away. It's uh, it's an interesting. It's it's something you could only see in Buffalo. I would yes. say. Do people do people in Western New York credit? I mean, what I've heard, but again, I'm not a Western New Yorker, so I want to hear it from you if it's true or not. Uh, that that La Nova in the let's say 80s or whenever. Buffalo wings were something that was very specific to Western New York. Now you can go into any bar, any restaurant around the country, and you can get Buffalo wings. Would you say it's true that the Lenovo uh, pizza franchise or wing franchise helped popularize uh, Buffalo wings to the rest of the country? Well, they weren't the first, but they certainly uh, have been very active in that. They even have sold frozen chicken wings right, that's what I was saying. all you over can find the world. Um, yep, you can find it on the well, I, I, I mean, they've made a, a real brand name for themselves. They have great food there. Um, and that they're, they've done as much as anybody in Buffalo to, to popular, popularize the chicken wing. No doubt about it. In fact, a lot of people will tell you that they don't think Joe Todaro's involved with the mob, if, if perhaps he was in the past, because he is so busy and doing so well with his pizza business that yeah. why why risk why his you? life, you know, with mobsters? No. I, uh, I would respond to that by saying both things can be true, and certain yeah, people I, of the of the type that people are alleging him to be. It's just in your DNA. It doesn't right. really matter what a normal, rational person would think. Sure. They would also say, in regards to him, again, if you were going to believe the allegations, that it's it's a family business. So it, you're, it's just not so quick to just throw away a legacy that your father or your grandfather yeah. had had put into. Uh, so I just want to wrap this up. I know you got to get going, but I want to just finish on a any observations in your time, your almost 50 years reporting there about the outlaw biker culture. Have, has it been a, uh, with the outlaws, the Hells Angels, Rare Breed, has it been a group that's traditionally 
worked with uh, the Italians? Is it a group that is kind of now becoming more of a big deal because of Tommy O uh, and what the, the government thinks he is? Yeah. Well, you made a very interesting comment when you and I were talking a few weeks ago that that you think the real target of their in federal investigation is the outlaws. And well, I think that if you're going to look, I'll just let me say this one thing. I think if you're going to look at what's going on in Chicktawaga and in, in Pharaoh Gentleman's Club, if you're going to look at that as a racketeering en enterprise, and I know that Tamio is not charged in that, yeah. but in my opinion, Peter Gerace would not be at the top of that pyramid. Tamio would be at the top of the pyramid, and Peter Gerace would be reporting to Tamio. Well, Tommy O is a, allegedly, according to the feds, the international president of yep. the outlaws. And the, and the feds call the outlaws a, a very powerful worldwide criminal organization. And Tommy O, through his attorney, has denied that he holds that position. He says he's a, he says he admits he's a member of the club, but denies that he's the he, he had his lawyer said he admits that he has a leadership role. Okay. And that he's been a spokesman for the outlaws, but he denies that he is the international president. The feds insist that he is. Now here you got this guy, and he's the general manager of a strip club in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. So you wonder what where that all leads, you wonder what the feds are going to try and make of that. And you wonder how successful they're going to be. I, I don't know. Stay, I just from, from stay tuned. It's it's like a very interesting yeah. storyline on the Sopranos. Yes. Or it's like a soap opera mixed with the Sopranos, mixed with mixed with Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. <laughs> mixed is. with yeah. uh you know a, a Sidney Lumet movie about corruption in the government there's so many things here um I, I just do my best to cover it and i try to be respectful to everybody involved including uh the alleged mafia people and the alleged biker gang leaders and and i just try to cover this without um doing it in a in a mean-spirited way but I, i'm very interested i find it very interesting me too. This is will be my yeah. disturbing and interesting, intriguing. Yeah. I think it's like a comment, it's a social commentary in a lot of ways. It, yeah. it speaks of Who what knows? the what what yeah. maybe criminality looks like in 2024 or 2000, Could you know, be. the 2020s. Um stay tuned. Stay tuned. Last thing I want to throw at you. Yeah. Uh so Crystal Quinn, the star witness in the case that was in, according to the government was intentionally overdosed back in August. She, from what I understand in, in reading these court findings and talking to some other people, she like cut her cooperation deal on like February 3rd of 23. The following week, Tommy O, according to the government, calls for a meeting of all of the biggest outlaw bosses in America to come to Buffalo. They all fly into Buffalo, I believe, on February 11th or 12th. Um, or I think they flew in on the 9th or 10th, and the meeting was on the 11th. It was at the Buffalo uh, Airport Hilton Garden Inn, and you had over 30 outlaw shot callers from around the country that came to be addressed by Tommy O. How do you read into that? Well, in fairness, it could have been a coincidence. And, uh, no. and I know you pointed out that it's an interesting coincidence, but um, unfortunately, we don't know what was said at that meeting. It would have been very interesting if we did. But, um, and if Mr. Gerace Jr. knew about that meeting or had any presence at that meeting, you know, only yeah. time will tell, I guess. But Dan, it's one of the many mysteries of the case for me. Me too. And I, I will, Dan and I will keep covering this. Uh, Dan, like I said, people like myself, we tip we tip our hat to people like you who laid the groundwork for what we do now. Um, I learned about, you know, I can go almost go to every city and go to someone like a Dan and be like, you. People look at me as an expert, 
but I learned, I mean, my Buffalo knowledge started with Dan yeah. and I've just, you know, met Dan kind of recently on a personal level, yeah. but uh, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be interested in the subject matter. I wouldn't be reporting on it if it wasn't for me reading Dan all the way back, you know, decades ago. So well, Dan, thanks so much that, for what you do. Scott, I, and I just wanted to tell you, and I've told you this in person, um, your podcast is very good because it's it's very interesting and it's intriguing but you are you're not reckless you are you 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 try to stick to the facts you do throw a few opinions in there but uh you're careful with what you report and uh i respect that thank you i try to stay away from the drama there's so much drama on, on youtube uh, well, there's the drama yeah, no, I, I like the drama, the uh, covering the drama. Yeah. I'm saying like when sh when shows on YouTube start, you know, slinging mud back and forth at each other, yeah. I just I stay away yeah. from all that. Just strict, yeah. strictly news analysis history. Yeah. And you have a newspaper background yourself. Yes, so. I I miss. Uh, I, I can go down. We can go down a journalism rabbit hole. But Dan Dan's been there forever. I I feel like I got there at the very very end of what the normal or at that time, what was the normal, um, you know, landscape of new newspaper journalism when that's where you, every morning you go out and get your newspaper. There was no on, you know, there was very little online presence. I remember trying to, as a young pup journalist, yeah. helping put the paper yeah. to bed. It felt like I was in the movie broadcast news. Yeah. <laughs> well, if I could just make a little pitch for newspapers. Um, when I worked at federal court for 24 years in Buffalo. And I'll tell you, and any knowledgeable reporter will tell you, even the most interesting trials, 90% of it is boring. Yep. So you need a reporter who's there physically to sit there for maybe six hours of testimony to get the 10 minutes that's yep. going to make a great story and that's going to be interesting to everybody. Yep. And if newspapers disappear, if you if you no longer have, you know, reporters out there doing the the scut work like that, guys like you are, it's you're not you're going to have a hard time getting information because Incredible. somebody's got to be out there in yep. court hearing this stuff. And, yep. and as I say, 90, 90 percent of it will put you to sleep. I wrote a I wrote a book on the longest federal. A mob trial in the history of Illinois. Yeah. I was sitting in a court from May of 2007 to October of 2007. Wow. So wow. yes, I had to take I had to take all of that and synthesize it down to like a 300 page. Yeah, book. exactly. And you know, it's like even these real interesting trials. You, for most of it, you have yeah. to fight sometimes to stay awake because yeah. it's it's detailed stuff that isn't very interesting and. Um, you know, and then something fascinating comes up and you got to make sure you're alert and you hear it. So, so Dan, tell, tell everybody where they can find you. I mean, obviously they can find you in the Buffalo News. Well, uh, anywhere else you want people to know where they can come? We, we have a, a, a very good newspaper still. It's called the Buffalo News and our website is buffalonews.com. Great reporting. Uh, great reporting. We got some, you know, the, our our business has taken a hit like every other, but we still have some tremendous people working at our paper. Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm still, I, I'm a dinosaur. I still want to have a paper in my hands. Not to say I don't yeah. sometimes read stuff yeah. online, but I'm still going to get the, I'm, we're from Detroit here. at the yeah. Yeah. I still go get the Detroit free press with Detroit news and read it you know, with my own two hands. I'm a, I'm a dinosaur like that, but you're right so important hopefully it evol it evolves and we don't lose as much of that as yeah we could dan thank you so much for joining me all right great talking to you scott good luck i'm sure we'll talk again we will talk soon dan please check out dan for anything and everything and the buffalo news anything but everything that is happening in this case the case of peter Gerace jr and uh Involved strip club. Yep. Pharaoh Strip Club, the outlaws, the alleged ties to the Magadino crime family. It's it's all there. Uh it's fascinating, it's compelling. Dan, thank you so much. All right, take care. Mm -hmm.